The Wyoming legislature started its 63rd session this week. Lawmakers will spend the next eight weeks working on issues that will likely affect all of us. As oil prices drop and fears rise that another bust is here, some lawmakers continue to want to be cautious about funding programs and projects. But Governor Matt Mead says we have the money to fund his supplemental budget priorities, and he's optimistic about moving forward as builders rather than hoarders. Joining us from Cheyenne to outline what's at stake this legislative session is Wild Files government and policy reporter Gregory Nickerson. Back in July, lawmakers were working under the assumption that oil was about $100 a barrel. But now that it's about half that price, this fear that we're on the verge of a bust or we're experiencing a bust right now has got to be flavoring a lot of what's going to happen this session. Governor Mead has pointed out that every $5 drop in the price of oil is a $35 million loss in revenue for the state. So based on those change in prices, we could be seeing about $230, $240 million in revenue not coming to the state. So that has people nervous about some of these longer term big ticket investments like the Science Initiative for the University of Wyoming and a number of other projects. So where the money will come to fund things like that or the capital renovation or the Gillette Madison water pipeline, uh, we're not really sure. But I think over the course of the session, you'll see some of those questions settled out and answered. When Matt Mead gave his State of the State address, he sounded rather optimistic about the next four years. Would you say so? I think so. There's a lot of good things underway right now. Um, Governor Mead thinks that he has enough money for his supplemental budget request. It's $156 million. There's about $5.9 million or billion dollars uh, available for spending. So he's seen plenty of, of money for his priorities, which include a number of things like the University of Wyoming and uh, adding some passing lanes to highways and funding for local government and quite a few other things. I think another issue is Medicaid expansion. Uh, he said he, although he was not fond of the Affordable Care Act, he said now is the time we really have to do something about Medicaid expansion. Um, what, what is the bill that's going to be considered? Well, there is one committee bill from the Labor Committee and it is called Medicaid Expansion Alternative. And it, essentially it uses a plan that was developed in Indiana to create health savings accounts, which would accept uh, state money that comes from the Medicaid, the federal Medicaid program. Essentially what's, what it would mean for users of the program is about 17,600 people would have a health savings account to pay for some of their care. They would have to pay in a little bit uh, in uh, premiums, insurance premiums, and co-payments for, for certain levels of income. Uh, the average, it would be about $230 a year for those people uh, to be paying into the, the health savings account in order to get these services. So it's, uh, it comes with a couple of, of caveats, and one is that it would have to be managed by private contractors or a third party and not the state, which is expected to cost more than if the Department of Health was managing the program itself. Why was this um, version the one that was put before um, the legislature? Wasn't there something else that the, the Department of Health had been supporting? So last legislative session, the lawmakers gave Governor Mead and the Department of Health a green light to negotiate uh, um, a Medicaid plan for Wyoming to expand it to this population. And over the summer and the fall, they worked on that and came up with something called the SHARE plan, which was essentially a traditional Medicaid expansion. And it was vetted by the Federal Center for Medicaid Services and was expected to be the lowest cost way to expand care to this group of people. What happened is that the chairman of the Labor Committee, Senator Charlie Scott from Natrona County, he has a firm conviction that Medicaid as it exists right now encourages people to overutilize care and when you get too much health care, uh, that can actually lead to poor outcomes, over medication and things like that. So he came up with this uh, idea to use the health savings account to encourage patients themselves to 
to kind of ration their care and not go in for unnecessary procedures and treatments. So he, this is his best way to try to control the costs of this, this program. And as it is now, the Department of Health is the largest and most expensive state agency we have. So he was concerned about, about those issues. Is there support to pass the Indiana plan, say this session? Well, I think it has probably the best chance of passing. Uh, there's currently no bill for the SHARE plan. You might see a couple individual legislators sponsor something like that, but the committee bill from the Labor Committee is uh, this Indiana Health Savings Account plan. And uh, well, there will probably be quite a few people who are opposed to anything along these lines. Um, there, there will also be some who support this health savings account program, but w you have to keep in mind that uh, it, it, the bill still has to go back through the committee, which Chairman Scott still is uh, in charge of, along with the House Chairman, Elaine Harvey. And uh, so that means that any kind of share plan would, would probably have trouble. It, it lost uh, being endorsed as a committee bill by one vote, so it's unlikely that that uh, makeup of the committee has changed with the new set of lawmakers that came in. Well, moving on to a different topic, will coal, will uh, selling coal um, internationally be a push this, this session? The main legislation that you can see right now along those lines deals with increasing the infrastructure authorities' bonding authority. So that means that instead of being able to put out one billion in bonds, they could put out three billion and have some of those bonds go to out-of-state projects like coal export uh, terminals in the Pacific Northwest. And that's the main push you see for exporting coal. Uh, right now. The Casper Star Tribune has come out against that, saying it would be better to invest in uh, railways and bridges, but um, th there's also some risk involved with putting out bonding to projects like this for the state. Some of the private companies that were trying to, to build these ports, like the Australian company Amber Energy, have recently pulled out of, of the project and, and sold their assets to uh, a Denver-based company. So the private financing is, is shaky, but uh, as the Car Casper Star Tribune noted, what's even more shaky is the political environment in Oregon, and you can't really change that by adding state uh, bonding uh, authority to, to push these, these projects forward. What about education? What's going to happen there? I would say that education is probably going to be the most controversial issue that we're going to see this legislative session. You have a constitutional amendment that would uh, eliminate the, the position of superintendent of public instruction in 2019. Um, that's going to be hugely controversial. Even though we had Senate File 104 be struck down by the Supreme Court, there's still a lot of hard feelings over that and a strong group of strong part of the population that just disagrees that this position and the authority it has from the voters uh, should should be eliminated. There's also going to be a lot of talk about the next generation science standards. The House Speaker Kermit Brown came out in favor of repealing the footnote that prohibits discussion of those standards. That is going to face a lot of resistance from other members of the House who have um, a strong support from people who don't like anything to do with the Common Core or the Next Generation Science Standards or the Smarter Balanced Assessments, anything that's kind of out of state uh, efforts aimed at improving education. What are some of the other hot issues? You're going to see the same kind of social issues bills you always see. There will be a couple gun rights bills. Um, there's an interesting interplay between um, those who want to add uh, gender identity and sexual orientation to the non-discrimination classes for employment. And then on the other hand, you have uh, a bill that would allow clergy to reject performing marriages to 
uh, couples, same-sex couples, for example, that they didn't agree with. So that's going to be a hot topic. Uh, in general, I think you're going to see the beginnings of some larger discussions about state savings and spending and how we're going to be investing in the state going forward as oil prices look to be down from what they have been. So that's, that's kind of the, the way the session looks to me. I don't see any major points of controversy outside of education. The revenue reports are going to tell us a lot about how legislators might be looking at some of these additional spending projects, even though Governor Mead says we have plenty of money to do everything. Greg, thanks. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. That was Gregory Nickerson, Capitol Correspondent from Wildfile, with a preview of this year's general legislative session.